Coming up, Cranky Hippo gets in the hot tub with his phone. A demonstration of the PS4 with Patrick Delahanty. Snubs has a speaker roundup and a whole lot more. It's time to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it right from your desk. For our special offer, go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone, and enter Before You Buy. And by Hulu Plus. Hulu Plus lets you binge on thousands of hit TV shows anytime, anywhere, on your TV, your PC, your smartphone, or your tablet. Visit HuluPlus.com slash before you buy to start your free two-week trial. That's HuluPlus.com slash before you buy. Ding, 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 whomp. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Before You Buy, the Twit product review show, where we get the latest and greatest into our studios here, and we ask our Twit staff to use it like real people and give you a real-world perspective on how these products work. And there's nothing realer than taking your phone into the hot tub. Our own technical director, we call him Cranky Hippo, his real name's Brian Burnett, takes the Galaxy S4 Active for a swim. Let's see how it came out. Hi, Brian from Twit, and we're taking a look at the S4 Active from Samsung. First look at the S4 Active. At a glance, it doesn't look too much different from the regular S4, but there's three big things that differentiate this from the typical S4, and that is it's waterproof, it has physical home buttons, and instead of an AMOLED screen, it has an LCD screen. But uh, from when I was testing it side by side with an S4, it wasn't really noticeable, the difference in the screen. So taking a closer look at the S4 Active, you can see that on either edge of the phone, there's a sort of rubber backing, which uh, does help make it a little bit more grippy when you're holding it. And I have to say, this phone fit my hand perfectly. It's a tad thicker than your typical S4. Now this phone has the same specs as the regular S4, so this is still a top of the line phone, has an excellent camera. My only complaint about the camera when I was playing with it is if you go to change modes, it's a little clunky trying to slide through uh, the options for different shots. So if you're in a hurry to take a picture and you wanted to take an HDR picture for instance and you weren't already in that mode, it's kind of a pain in the butt to get to that mode. Now, just because it is a little bit more rugged doesn't mean it's impervious to being destroyed. I was riding my motorcycle taking some panorama shots with the, the Active, and it fell out of my pocket while I was riding, and it got completely destroyed. So it's not indestructible, but um, as far as cell phones go, this, this phone is slightly more rugged than your average smartphone, and the fact that it's waterproof is pretty cool. The pros and cons for the S4 Active are it's got a great screen, it's got really good performance, an excellent camera, um, and above all, it's waterproof. As for the cons, this phone is, you can only get it on AT&T, so that's kind of a bummer. Uh, and also, the speaker is on the back, and after playing with, you know, the HTC One, uh, the speaker doesn't, isn't that great on it. So is the Samsung S4 Active a buy, try, or don't buy? If you are an AT&T customer, uh, without a doubt, this is probably one of the best phones you can get. And if you're looking for one that has that extra safety net of being waterproof, uh, which very few top-of-the-line phones offer these days, uh, then this is a great choice, and this would be my choice for an everyday phone. I'm Brian Burnett from Twit, and this was my review of the Samsung S4 Active. Well, well. <laughs> was that in the hot tub with you, Brian? You want to talk about that? <laughs> friend. Just a friend. So that's really the second Galaxy S4 Active. And that's an important point. You can take it for a hot tub. You can take it for a swim. But don't take it for a motorcycle ride, all right? Uh, thank you, Brian Burnett. Uh, the Galaxy S4 Active uh, from uh, Samsung uh, is, what did you say? Mostly. Mostly more robust. But uh, definitely a buy. Now, I'm very interested in this next one because Patrick Delahanty is here. And he has a uh, PlayStation 4. Yeah. Just came out. 
Yep. Got this on Friday. We Friday. Gave it a thorough test. Did this an unboxing. Day one edition. Yes. Did you and get a special sticker or logo or anything? No, there's nothing uh, special on yeah. it. But uh, I'm loving it so far. Awesome. Now, yep. qualification. You're a PS3 user. Yes. I you love PS3. PS3. Yep. You were PS2 before that. Did yep. you ever have an Xbox? Never had an Xbox. Okay. So we're not judging it against the Xbox. This is mostly yeah. judging against the PS3, I guess. Yeah. And it's, I think it's a vast improvement over the PS3. It doesn't have the games library yet, but... It will get there at some point, I'm sure. In fact, it's likely to get there faster than the PS3 because it's an x86 processor. Exactly. So it's a little easier to write software for. Yeah, and there aren't many exclusive titles yet, but those will come, and even if they're not exclusive, they're still on PS3, and it's easy to write. Give us a quick tour of the features. It still has a Blu-ray player like its yes. uh, little brother. Yeah. yeah, and it can play DVDs and Blu-ray. Can't play audio CDs. Cannot play audio. Okay, and no 3D yet. Uh, they said yet. there will be an upgrade. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I'm sure that there'll be many software upgrades. As, yeah. And hopefully because the organization in the menus isn't really there, it's kind of all just... Uh, so we're not seeing the traditional uh, PlayStation 3 UI? Uh, it's got this it's horizontal interface yeah. still. It's a okay. little reversed where everything oh. Instead on this of coming, side popping down, there. it pops sideways. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. there's stuff down below. So you've got yeah. all the games just in a straight line. That's good, actually. It was always hard to get to a game on the PS3. Well, I would like it if it was categorized somehow. Right. If, if I want to get to something that's way over here I haven't played in a right. while. Have you played Battlefield 4 on it? Yeah. Pretty yeah, good? It looked great. Yeah. So that's, I guess, really when you're reviewing this. And unlike the Xbox, this is not a multimedia device. It does have a Blu-ray. In yeah. fact, the PS3 was the best Blu-ray player on the market the whole yeah. time because they could easily upgrade it. Yeah, and I played Blu-ray on this last night. Worked great. Played okay. DVD. Worked great. Interface uh, was simple. HDMI only, right? Yes. No other way of connecting it to a TV. Right. Um, and it and is cheaper than the Xbox. 100 bucks cheaper. Yeah, $100. It doesn't come with the camera like the Xbox comes with the Kinect. Or the Kinect. But that's only $60. And this so would work still... with the Move controller if you had a Sony Move controller. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So let's, I mean, really, it's all coming down to what does it look like? How are the games? Yeah. The, By the way, I saw Netflix on there. Yeah, it has Netflix. Uh, Amazon Live. Yeah, a Amazon. Redbox. Red Box. Okay. Let me go back down. Oh, it's quite got, a bit. All right. Yeah, so it's got kind of selection similar to the Apple TV yeah. here. So it's a good uh, media device. Not quite device. as many, but I'm sure they'll add more. There's no MLB, but it's off-season, so right, at some right. point... They'll NBA be. and NHL, that's yeah. nice. All right, let's see a game. You've got uh, Need for Speed, the latest version of yeah. Need for Speed on here. You, That's your favorite game? Yeah, that's the, I've got uh, Need for Speed, uh, Call of Duty Ghosts, and Battlefield 4. And so far, Need for Speed is the one I'm enjoying the most. Okay. But I, I love driving games. Yeah, well, that would explain it. <laughs> you drove here from Boston, didn't you? Yeah, 3,000 okay. miles. Just can't get enough. Is it use your existing PlayStation account? You don't have to create a new account? Yeah, right? uh, okay. it, but to do multiplayer, unlike the PS3, you have to buy PlayStation Plus. Ah, so no, work free out, no free lunch this time. Anymore. All yeah. right, okay. It's going to be $50 a year. All right. Still uh, less than Microsoft. Yeah, still less, but... Uh, yeah. that's Well, that's good to know if you do multiplayer. So uh, we're going to play a single-player yeah. version. You've got a, what is that, a Marussia B2? Oh. A Marussia B2? <laughs> Yeah, the battery. Oh, <laughs> nice timing. By the way, that's another thing that uh, is big change on the PS4. The uh, the uh, controller now is very different, and a lot of people think is better than, frankly, the not so great PS3 yeah. controller. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I like the feel of this a lot more than the PS3 controller. These are the 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 little just, handles are longer. It's easier to grasp. Yeah. With, especially it, with a smaller hand. It's just the texture. It, it's different. It, I think it feels better. It does feel well good in the hand now. Uh, what is this? Oh, we're going to give them oh, a different one here. Yeah, we get the yeah. charged one here. It comes with one controller, but I did get a spare. Okay. Uh, this is a touch screen, or not a screen, but a touch pad in the middle so that you, uh, games can use this. Have you used a game that it. uses it yet? Uh, the only one I've seen has this is uh, Battlefield 4, but that's just to act access some options. Okay. Uh, so this is yet to be really fully implemented. Yeah, and it has speaker in here and a headphone jack, so you don't have to have wireless. You can actually just plug in. Right. It depends with a mono headphone that you can plug in. Right. So there's no wireless audio, but there is a, a wireless controller which has audio. Yes. A hardwired audio. Um, uh, there's a share button, so you can easily share gameplay footage on Twitch TV mm -hmm. and uh, screenshots or movies. So they're encouraging sharing of, of the footage and the gameplay. I do notice they've changed to a micro USB uh, charger, which is nice because everybody has lots yeah. of those probably, so you don't have to charge it off the PlayStation. You can charge it from, uh, with anything, right? Yeah, and uh, but the 
the PlayStation will charge it now when it's even when it's off. When it's off, hallelujah! Drove me crazy on the PS3. <laughs> you had to leave it on yeah. to charge up your controllers. And it comes with the one cable to uh, charge the the controller, but I. My second controller didn't come with a USB cable. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Fortunately, these micro USB cables are a dime a dozen. So. All right, let's play a little bit of a game. Yeah. What did you think? The graphics look better than on your PlayStation 3? Uh, yes. Noticeably. Yeah, noticeably better. There's a, a lot more action. There seems to be less lag, less time at loading screens. Now, that could just be the games, but I, I think it's the system. Uh, like the Xbox, it has 8 gigabytes of, uh, well, this has GDDR, but the Xbox has DDR. RAM. Yeah. Uh, and then how big is the drive? 500 gigs, right? 500 gigabytes. And unlike the Xbox, you can remove it and put in a larger one if you want. Well, we noticed that. We did it. In fact, if people are interested, we did an iFixit teardown on Sunday. It's Twitch Special 173, I think. Uh, and uh, you, it was the first thing you do before you even open and void the warranty. You can slide off a little panel and get right to the hard drive. So Sony's making it easy to upgrade the hard drive on yeah. this. That's nice. Standard SATA to uh, uh, hard drive in there. Yeah. Uh, not a great driver, but you're busy. You're busy. Yeah. You're doing other things. <laughs> you're doing a review. And I, yeah, and I, I'm not seeing any other people on the road right here. <laughs> That's because you they left a long time ago. They're yeah, already in ahead. Santa Monica. Oh, here's Monica. one up ahead. Oh, good. I'll, I'll catch him. <laughs> I, I oh, think there's that's a the, pursuit uh, going on up here. So. Oh, look at that. There yeah, you, you have go. To, to, oh. Oh, oh, I hit the median. Oh, that's not good. No. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I'm we back should put the out, unlike, you know, people are going to compare this as I did to Forza 5, which is the new driving game for the Xbox One. That's designed to look like real cars. This is designed yeah. to be... Uh, it's more of an arcade game. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So, we like the... Uh, we, there you go. We, that's hard to do that while you're reviewing. I understand. Yeah, I'm doing yeah. the Xbox One next week, and I'm going to be worse, so don't worry about it. So, you like the get, you like the graphics? Yes. The new controller, you think, is better? Yes. I, mm -hmm. I like the new controller much more, and the, the light is cool that, that hits on, this, on the end here. Yeah, I love the design of the PS3. Still can sit on its side as well as, ta as uh, uh, flat, right? Yes. They have a stand so it can stand vertically that's sold separately. And I think this will look nice in your home theater. Yeah, and it, it's... Smaller than the PS3. Yeah. And uh, definitely smaller than the Xbox. Yeah. Uh, the one con I have is it's not backward compatible, so I still have to have my PS3 hooked up so I can finish The Last of Us and Grand Theft Auto V. I, I think that that word has gone out on both the Xbox One and PS4, but yeah. it's really important to underscore this. None of your existing games as it stands will play yeah. on this thing. Which is different than when the PS2 and the PS3 right. came out. That's right. Uh, and I... You know, maybe the companies are planning some way of streaming your old games or something like that, but we haven't seen any details on that. Yep. So right now, you're going to either keep your PS3 and finish finish those games. Last of Us is great. Yeah. Not available for this, though, yet. Not yet. Uh, I don't know if they're going to do a PS4 version, but uh, they some companies have announced upgrades where for 10 bucks you can upgrade your PS3 version of yeah, if you go through uh, Assassin's Stop, Creed or yeah, Call of Duty yeah. Ghost, you can get the PS4 In version. effect, you're selling your old version because you're yeah. giving them the old disc and they'll give you the new one for 10 bucks. Yeah, but you can do that right through the PlayStation oh, that's Store nice. and download the new version. How's the battery life on these? The same? Uh, it seems to be less. Than yeah, I noticed you PS3. ran out a little prematurely. Yeah, no, I had been playing with that controller last night, oh, too. Okay. All but, right. uh, so you got a, you got yeah. a good evening's worth of play out yeah, of it before but it ran out. They look the same. I couldn't tell which one was which. <laughs> well, now I we got know. the wrong one. <laughs> now we know. Uh, all right, well, let's get the quick pros and cons and your recommendation. All right, the, the pros, it's priced $100 less than the Xbox One. Uh, so it seems to be a good price point. Uh, improved controllers. That's $399, right? Yes, $399. Yeah. Uh, improved controllers and a smaller system with an elegant interface and a replaceable hard drive. Uh, as for the cons, it's not backwards compatible. Uh, for multiplayer, PlayStation Plus is required. So it's going to run about fifty dollars a year, and the music limitations we mentioned. Right. Uh, so buy, try or don't buy. I would give this a buy. Well, why not? But wait until there's games that you want to play. Yeah. Some really good games come out this spring. Yeah, and uh, Destiny next year I want on the PS4. Yeah. Uncharted, which is a Sony yeah. classic, is going to be. Uh, yeah, that's going to be, be Uncharted Four, right, or three? Uh, Where I think it's four yeah, now. It's right? four. Holy cow! Um, yeah, good. And uh, Watch Dogs will be out eventually, yes. too, and I'm yeah, very excited great. about that. But that's going to be on both platforms. Thank you, Patrick Delahandy. Patrick's our house programmer and wizard, and we really appreciate <laughs> having him around. The PlayStation 4 from Sony, $299 is a buy. Yes. Did I say that right? $299? $399. Oh, uh, wishful thinking.
Three ninety nine. Still a buy. You know what those are? Stamps. U.S. stamps. Official U.S. postage. But you know what I love about it? I printed it on my printer with my computer. I didn't have to go to the post office to get these stamps. You can also print directly on envelopes. You can print package uh, uh, stickers for mailing. I'm talking about stamps.com. This lets you print official U.S. postage on demand whenever you need it from your computer and your printer. You don't need any special links. You don't need a postage meter. And I'll tell you, the holiday season is the time to try stamps.com. Because not only are you going to be doing a lot of mailing, so is everybody else. The last thing you want to do is head to the post office when you could do it all from your desk. And I mean do it all. Stamps.com gives you discounts you can't get at the post office. Uh, priority mail, Priority Mail Express shipments. If you mail uh, with Priority Mail or Express, you can get an uh, email sent to your recipient with a tracking number automatically. The tracking is great. And you know what's nice? You don't even have to get up to mail the darn thing. The mail carrier comes to your door. Well, they do Monday through Saturday. But they also will do that uh, on demand because Stamps.com has a big button that says, get the mail carrier, and they'll come and get it. I just love Stamps.com. That's why we've arranged a no-risk trial offer for your small business. If you sell on eBay, Amazon, Etsy, PayPal, you really got to do this. This makes your fulfillment, you know, your sending out of your stuff as pro as can be. It looks pro. It works better for you. It's a great deal. Try it right now. Visit stamps.com. Wait a minute. Give us a try. $5 of free postage. Forget that. Click the microphone. $5. Enter in the offer code before you buy all one word. I'm just talking about the front page of stamps. I have to say five. How about $55 in free postage? Visit stamps.com. Yes, we're going to give you $55 in free postage to use over the first few months of your account. You're going to get that digital scale. It's free. Just you pay the $5 shipping and handling. There's a $5 supply kit to make up for that. And of course, a month free of stamps.com. That's a $110 bonus offer. Stamps.com. Click the microphone in the upper right hand corner, that, that radio mic there. And make sure you use the offer code before you buy one word so they know you heard it about it on before you buy. Stamps.com. Now's the time. Don't put it off any longer. Shannon Morse, our producer at uh, the show. She's the one who gets all the products, wrangles them, hands them out. She's very popular on Tuesdays. <laughs> Here, you can review this. She took on a big one. She, we get so many Bluetooth speakers. It's a very hot category, as everybody knows. So we, we, we gave her four different Bluetooth speakers to review. Shannon Morse has the details. You know we love speakers here. So this week, I'm Shannon Morse, and I'm producing Before You Buy, and I'm also reviewing four different speakers. So let's go ahead and get started with the Kinevo BTX350. Now, this speaker costs $69.99 MSRP, but you can find it on sale for about $39. Pretty good price. It comes with your regular cables. You have your USB charging cord and your audio 3.5 millimeter jack cable. <laughs> The audio quality on this one is a little bit lacking. I noticed that bass is kind of muddy when it's coming out, even when it gets really loud, and vocals were, they were clear enough for audiobooks, but honestly, if you're taking this on the go with you, you're probably listening to a lot of music, so if you like bass, might not be the best one for you. Now, it does have tons of buttons on the top, and it does last for about five hours on a charge, so that's pretty decent for its price point. The pros and cons on this one, pros, it is low cost, so that's a definite plus. However, the cons is the muddy base. So if you're buying this at the MSRP price of 70 bucks, I would give it a don't buy. Next up, we have the Edifier Extreme Connect Bluetooth speaker. This one also is a Bluetooth speaker, so you can take it on the go. This one lasts about 10 hours as opposed to five hours for the Kinevo. Now, this one is $99.99, so you're also going to be paying a little bit more, but it comes with the same exact cables as the other one, and it also comes with a nice little travel bag. Now, cute thing about this one, it comes in five different colors, and it has all these cute, playful buttons on the top. Now, these do take a little bit longer to figure out where they all are, now, one thing that's funny about it, when you turn it on, it sounds like an 80s TV show. 
Isn't that cute? That is pretty cute, but it does not affect the actual sound quality of this one. It has really, really strong bass for those hardcore songs, and it has very clear vocals for audiobooks. I was very happy, happy whenever I was listening to all my sci-fi audiobooks on this guy. So, my pros and cons for this. Pros, it gets 10 hours of battery life. That's a definite plus. Strong bass, really clear vocals, and it's got this cute, playful design. On the cons, though, you get distortion at higher volumes, which may be an issue for some people, but all in all, I have to give this one a buy. And next up we have the Satechi BT Touch Speaker. Now this one is also Bluetooth, so you can use it with any of your devices. It's interesting because it has all these BT Touch controls on the top. I noticed whenever you're trying to wake up these controls, you may end up pausing a song or skipping to a next one whenever you're waking it up on accident. That That's a bit irritating for me. Now with audio quality on this one, it is a little bit lacking. Uh, vocals are lacking, they sound a little bit quiet. Uh, good bass, but it's not overwhelmingly awesome. Now this one can last six hours on a single charge and it costs MSRP $79.99. However, you can get it on sale for around 49 bucks. So my pros on this one, it has really good bass quality even at higher volumes. However, the cons, waking up on those touch controls is a bit of a pain and the vocal clarity could definitely be better. So I give this one a try. <laughs> So this one is called the Eye Shower. You can get this online for $99.99, the same price as the Edifier Extreme Connect. However, this one is waterproof, specifically because you're supposed to use it in your shower. So it comes with this cute little wall hanger for your shower head, and it also comes with a wall dock, so you can dock it right against your wall in your shower. Now it lasts about 15 hours, but that 15 hours is coming out of two AA batteries, which you have to replace. You cannot use, well, you could use rechargeable AA's if you wanted to, but if you don't have those available, you have to replace the AA's. That's a pain. Also on the back is the speaker. So if you have this right against your wall, you're getting really, really muddy and quiet noises. That's no good for this guy. So my pros and cons of the eye shower. First off, the pros. It is waterproof, definitely. I tested that, it does work in the shower. <laughs> and it has this cute on-device clock. That can be pretty useful if your roommate's getting mad at you for taking up the bathroom for a very long time. Also, the cons on this, it does require batteries. It has the speaker on the back of the device instead of the front, that's kind of unfortunate. And if you look this up online and read actual consumer reviews, there are a lot of people who have owned this for over a year that say it's already failed for them after the 90 day warranty. So it has a high failure weight rate and that's definitely unfortunate for this device at $100. So I have to give this one a don't buy. So all of these speakers cost under a hundred bucks. Some of them are even on sale for really good prices. And we had one buy, one try, and two don't buys. Again, I'm Shannon Morse, the producer of Before You Buy, and I'll see you back in the studio. Oh, I'm sorry, Shannon, I was watching The Daily Show. Are you done now? No, I'm just kidding. Thank you, Shannon Morse. Some great reviews of uh, four different Bluetooth speakers, but only one buy. And of course, that's the most expensive. No, it's not. It's not the most expensive one, or is it? Yeah, it is. Close to. 100 bucks for the Edifier Extreme. Now, it's time to mention, before we go on, and we've got some great reviews still to come, including a Lenovo IdeaPad and Alex Gumpel with a new Microsoft Surface 2. Before we do that, though, can I tell you how I was watching The Daily Show on my iPad? Yeah, you got it. Hulu Plus! You can watch your favorite TV shows instantly. Binge on the favorites. Thousands of hit shows anytime, anywhere. Works on your TV, of course. Hulu Plus probably is even on the PlayStation. I wouldn't be surprised, yeah. Your PC, of course. You just go to Hulu.com. Your smartphone, your tablet. I've got it on mine, on my iPhone and my iPad. Visit HuluPlus.com slash before you buy. You can try it free for two weeks. See how it works for you. Uh, you probably tried Hulu. Hulu Plus is a lot more. You can watch your favorite shows anytime, anywhere. They've got classic movies. They've got Doctor Who. I'm sitting next to a Whovian. They've got Lost. They've got Community. They've got Star Trek. They've got current shows like Jimmy Kimmel, Shark Tank, Family Guy, Saturday Night Live. There's exclusive comment. Hulu originals like The Wrong Man and Behind the Mask, Hulu's new docuseries that takes you inside the world of, what do you think, Behind the Masks? Sports mascots. 
Ever wonder, who's inside that Philly fanatic? And why does his nose look like that? You'll find out on Behind the Mask. Also, great ad-free movie, kid content. Oh, for the kids, uh, uh, it's a must. Seven ninety nine dollars a month. You can catch up on all your favorite shows, binge on old favorites, or watch a great new movie. Keep your kids entertained with your iPad. And it's free for the next two weeks. But i got to warn you, don't show your kids unless you're ready to buy it because they're going to say, Daddy, what happened to Hulu Plus? Daddy's too cheap to buy us Hulu Plus. HuluPlus.com slash before you buy $7.99 a month, Dad. Come on. HuluPlus.com slash before you buy. Try it free for two weeks and you'll see why. We are all Hulu Plus addicts here at Twit. It's selling it right now. Ah, here it comes. His Hulu Plus on his PS4. It's nice, you know, that the PS4, and I would expect this if Sony kind of made their re relationships, uh, you know, that existing relationships and extended them onto the new thing. But we're a little disappointed because we were trying Twit, uh, and you can't watch live uh, yet on the PS4. I know a lot of our fans watching the PS3, so if you're one of those people that uh, watches uh, Twit on uh, the PS3, you might want to hold off a little bit. Ayaz Akhtar uh, has really become, in many ways, our king of uh, Lenovo's. We give him all the <laughs> Lenovo's, and we say, what do you think of this one? Huh? What do you think of this one? This time we tried the IdeaPad Mix 10 plus keyboard. It's uh, Lenovo's Windows 8 tablet, 10.1 inches. Let's take a look and see what he thinks. I'm Aya Zaktar, and this here is the Lenovo IdeaPad Mix 10. It's a Windows 8 tablet, and we could take a look around. It's a pretty simple design. It's like a lot of other tablets. There's a Windows key, and then not a whole lot else on the front. If we go down here, we have a micro USB port that we can attach things to. HDMI on the side, that's the power adapter. Under this door is a slot for a micro SD card slot. There's a volume rocker. We've got a power button, headphone jack, and pretty much that's it. On the back, a very clean silver design. The speaker grill right here. No rear-facing camera. One megapixel front-facing camera. Not exactly the best camera in the world, but then again, if you're a tablet photographer, this is not the device for you. This 10-inch screen has a resolution of 1366 by 768, so it's a passable display on a size this large. If it was a 13-inch device, I'd have an issue. Also, it'd be a ridiculously large tablet. This is a 10-inch 1366 by 768 tablet. Pretty good when it comes to color and angles. I did enjoy that. Now, this device shipped with Windows 8, but Microsoft updated it to Windows 8.1. After I did that, this device started to run really inconsistently. The desktop application seemed to have a lot of issues. I'm not sure what's going on with the software here, but when I was running Windows 8, it ran really well. 8.1, not so hot. The device is nice and light for a 10-inch device. It's 1.27 pounds, so it's a little bit heavier than the iPad Air, but this is a 10-inch full-fledged Windows PC. We can actually you know, snap things to the side if we wanted to run different applications because it's a real operating system. Now, Lenovo also makes this keyboard case for the Mix 10. It actually snaps in magnetically. I can take the tablet, I can prop it into the little uh, sill, and there we go. Now we have the device in here. It's pretty flimsy because it's really meant to be a nice cover. It actually feels like a nice book. You'd hold a nice hardcover novel if you had something like that, a large one. But it's really meant for those cases when you need to do some typing. It works okay on the lap, but it's a little flimsy because it's magnetic. As you can see, it's been a bit buggy as of late. I'm not really sure why this is happening. It could just be a software issue with this particular device. Inside is an Intel Atom dual core processor. That's kind of an issue because that's last generation technology. You can get better stuff out there these days. On my pros and cons. Pros, it's a light device. When it works, it's pretty snappy. I will say that battery life is pretty decent and it's got a good design. As you can see, we're having all kinds of issues. Front facing camera, go. I don't know if I launched it or not, but there it goes. On the cons, the processor, Intel Atom dual core processor. You can get faster processors out there now for Windows 8.1. The price, it's $479. That's pretty pricey compared to other tablets for last generation's technology. And as I mentioned before, having some seriously odd performance issues with Windows 8.1. If you want a Windows 8.1 device, you might be better off with a number of competitors, including something from ASUS. This unfortunate piece of technology was a Lenovo IdeaPad Mix 10. I'm Ayaz Akhtar, and back to you guys at BYB. Thank you, Ayaz. Uh, that's a Windows 8 Pro tablet. Just, I mean, I think that was obvious. Uh, but we're going to take a look at a Windows 8.1 RT tablet, the Surface 2, in just a little bit. Before we do, though, 
I'd like to bring in uh, Radford Castro. He is our engineering manager. And we gave him something, not a rain stick, a game stick. Let's see what he thought of it. Hi, this is Radford with Twit, and this is the review of the Android-based game stick. With the PS4 and Xbox One going toe-to-toe -to -toe for home console supremacy, a few contenders have recently joined these pricey behemoths, hoping to carve out a cheaper side of gaming all under 100 bucks. The game stick itself is one of two parts. It's a tiny console dongle that slots inside the controller, ready to push out and plug onto a TV. The controller's hard plastic body is reminiscent of those um, old school PCFX controls from NEC. On the back, you won't find any triggers, but the controls are otherwise standard with two clickable analog sticks, a pair of bumpers, and a familiar back, start, directional pad, and the ABXY buttons. When you hold it, older generation gamers will be transported back to the Super NES and Nintendo games when the game pads lack the ergonomics we have now today. So depending on how old you are, it'll either feel nostalgic or jarring. While the controller is never exactly comfortable though, it's not awkward enough that you won't get used to it quickly. Now, the dongle that you see here is covered in a soft svelte rubber that feels like it's finely combed felt. When you're going for mobile or heading to a friend's house, it slides right into this slot, right in the controller, from which this weird pair of tiny sinister eyes guard them. Setting up the game stick is a breeze. All you'll need is an HDMI port, but if it's hard to reach, you can use the optional extender. And then turning on the controller, starts this painless pairing process. Then head to the GameStick website to do some registering to get your account locked into the cloud so that the games you're about to buy or download work out. While it may run Android, an unrecognizable form of Jelly Bean 4.2, there is no access to any of Google Apps or a Play Store. This means that if you previously invested in the games on your Samsung Galaxy S4 or HTC One, you won't be able to re-download them to play on the big screen. And that's really what this is all about, the games. As simple and as basic as the interface is, the same can be said about its game library. But this is Android, is it not? Why aren't we getting all these nice games? Simple. Controllers are different from touchscreens. So how do the games play? Well, let's talk about the specs first. So the game stick is powered by a modest ARM Cortex-A9 processor, the MALI400 GPU, and it has 8 gigabytes of storage built in, expandable into 32 gigabytes with a micro SD card. It's capable of running the kind of old Shadow Gun, but that's probably the most graphically advanced game you're going to have. So it's not exactly top of the line. The GameStick Media Player is another thing that you probably want to check out. And it's just there to kind of display videos and images from USB drives and memory cards. And it supports things like AVIs, M1Vs, M4Vs, QuickTimes, MPEGs, you name it. But other than that, that's pretty much it. That's all you're going to have. So the pros are is that it's very portable. It's lighter in the hand, and it can fit almost everything aside from your back pocket. It's a very nice console, and it works against probably some very good $100 base consoles like the Ouya. So it competes well against that. The cons are is that you're going to have to download a few things. You're going to jump some hoops to get this thing working the way you want it to work. And the other thing, too, is that the biggest, biggest knock, though, is the fact that it has a very weak library at the moment. And time will only tell how quickly this library will grow. Unfortunately, I have to give this verdict a don't buy. For $80, you can actually use that for iOS games on your tablet or your smartphone. Even for Android, there's probably more games that you could get on Google Play than you would on the game stick. So I'm Radford Castro, and for Before You Buy, this is a review of the game stick. Thank you, Radford Castro, Director of Engineering at the Twit uh, Brick House. I mean, I could see getting that maybe at that price for a kid who doesn't care what the games are, and if he breaks it, well, you're out of 80 bucks. That's about it. Um, but obviously not a state-of-the-art device. Here is a state-of-the-art device. State-of-the-art. Alex, Alex Gumpel is here. He's the flow master in charge of uh, all things flowish. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I hear. <laughs> and also a big fan of uh, Windows 8.1. You had a Surface RT. Right, I have a Surface RT, which is right here. You have a Surface sake. Pro, right? Uh, no Pro. No, never got the Pro. Never so you're an pro. RT guy. I'm an RT guy. Okay. Well, I also I, have I the Surface the, RT. I the Pro is a laptop replacement. I don't need that. 
No, if you're going to have a so, tablet, yeah. go with the tablet it's OS. A tablet and OS, I'm yeah. kind of with you on that. Right. Now, people did say that once you put 8.1 on the original Surface RT, it wasn't so bad. Right. It, it definitely made it much better to, uh, usability. Right. And a little bit faster, but it still was sluggish. That was the biggest issue for right. me was that it was sluggish. So Microsoft uh, just uh, on a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago shipped the Surface 2. Now, Surface 2. This is, uh, we got to explain the nomenclature. Naming conventions, yes. Yeah. So Surface 2 is the sequel to the Surface RT. But there's no RT in the name. No RT in the name. But it, but is, it RT. is RT. Okay. So Surface 2, uh, it's so the uh, the old one was a Tiger 3. They bumped it up to a Tiger 4. Uh, it's um, so it's running Windows RT 8.1. Right. And because it's Windows, like a benefit that you get is even though it's a tablet, you have user accounts. So right. if you if you're passing this around to people, you Others know, can have use it. Account and it's all their own personalized stuff, just like a regular Windows. Of computer. course, it's faster. Of course, it's got the new version of Windows. But the thing that, that seemed the biggest change to me is the screen. It's now 1080p. Right, it's a 1080p screen like the uh, Surface, the original Surface Pro was, and now both the Pro 2 and the 2 right. have. Uh, That's a big difference. Yeah, it's, uh, it, well, yeah. the old one wasn't bad, but it, I mean, you can't notice it, of course, on you the camera. You can't on but, the camera. Like, in but, fact, I can't notice it from here, well, but if you got yeah. close, you would. If you got close, yeah, you're really actually like reading it like yeah. article, then yeah. I pay attention that. to this stuff. I like I like a crisp, clear display. And frankly, these high res displays are, have become standard across right. all operating systems, so right. it only makes sense to put and, it on. And part of uh, Windows 8.1 was improving its kind of uh, the right. foundation for allowing that kind of Do stuff. Do you notice the speed is better? Uh, yeah, it's definitely much snappier. Um, it can still chug if you like if you have a bunch of tabs open in IE. It's kind of waiting for the tabs to load can still take some time, but it's definitely faster than the old one was in that. But apps load quicker. The other thing is it's just overall just snappier. A big selling point of Windows RT, and that's true of the Surface 2, is it comes with a full version of Office. Right, so it's got Office RT 2013. That's so, included, which right. is a great deal. And, and including Outlook now in the 8.1 version. But the thing to understand is it doesn't run Windows 8, Windows Pro apps, traditional Windows right. apps. It so only it's, it's RT, so it's only runs these new modern UI stuff. It's only Windows stuff. Store apps, yeah. except for Office, but that's because that's their own... Uh, the office is the one exception. There. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, so it, basically, everything about it has been improved upon the old one. Uh, the like the body itself is just a hair um, thinner and a hair lighter. I noticed it's, it, it's not really noticeable. The uh, the vapor deposition magnesium. They've gone from this dark gray, right. which was a little fingerprint magnet right, to, to uh, this. The and texture. It's a, it's a little bit textured. So this one yeah. is very smooth. This one has some texture on it. It doesn't have all the fingerprints that the old one had. It's still uh, magnesium, but it's still I think magnesium, it, yeah. I think it's a much nicer. Yeah, feel. no, I, I yeah. do like it a lot. Yeah. Uh, also, if I don't, if it doesn't really matter, but this was actually three pieces of magnesium here. They reduced it to two here, so the side and the back is now one unibody well, piece. They also added another click angle, which I I right. think is so really great. Click stand, you know, it comes out like the old one did, but it also has an additional uh, thing here for tall people like me, for instance. Well, I this think is a instance, much better angle if, at using it. If you're in an airline seat or you're sitting at breakfast and this angle doesn't work for you for whatever reason, it's nice to have a right. second choice. And also, it's much better to lap when you have it this way. Yes, I agree. Keyboard is the same, though, right? Uh, yeah, well, similar. The, similar, yeah. Uh, you, you they, got, they, it, this, this is, is the, the, this is the original keyboard. touch That's cover. The type this keyboard. is the type cover 2. Okay. So they did improve that. It's now backlit. Uh, the, the, compared to the old type cover, the keys are a little bit different. Um, but it the also has thing is battery. Backlit. No, this one does not have it battery. It does not. Okay. The power cover is coming out early next year. That's coming. That's going to okay. be like $200 just for that. But that will add uh, some six, three yeah, hours. Yeah, but to which the for life. this one, you don't really need. That would be more for the Pro, okay. for like getting really all day battery life on a Pro. What did you get on this? Uh, this is, it, it's all day for just casual use. 10 hours, I mean, 12, yeah. 8, yeah. 8, 8 to 10 eight hours, to hours or so. Uh, yeah. If you don't use it, it'll last days and days. So what is new with the keyboard cover than the touch cover? Uh, mostly it's that it's backlit. Oh, backlit. That's neat. Yeah, so, you I mean, the lights cool. are on, so you can't really see it. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's backlit. That's, that's another thing, like, high-res displays we've gotten used to, uh, having backlit. Now, and, but this is the type cover. The, the touch cover, too, which I don't have, actually is uh, much improved. So the old one, each key was its own individual sensor. So there's, like, 88 sensors or something. Mm -hmm. The new one has, like, a 1,000 sensors across the whole plane. So you so can type more accurately. It's essentially like a giant... Um, touch uh, pad wow so um which is so for a keyboard it will improve the accuracy because it's kind of measuring in between yeah. and trying to uh, calculate what you're trying to do but also what's cool is that it has the possibility for future improvement of different kinds of devices that put use an overlay screen, that have an overlay that's customized for that for yeah. a certain thing well, that's neat so for they, gaming, they have that, that they have great. that dj cover that's ah. uh, really uh, seen but yeah exactly is this I is this backlit? No. Uh, the new type cover is. It is. It is. Well, that's impressive. All right. Mm -hmm. So both covers 
uh, backlit. Right. Um, so um, another thing about the old one that a lot of people didn't like was that the speakers are really quiet. Yeah. Uh, they improved that with a firmware update. Uh, the new one is actually better than that. It has they put some Dolby something in there to make it better. Yeah. Um, it's got doubling. So I mean, you can't actually have it enough to kind of fill a room in here, like a small room. <laughs> A room. I mean, it's small. Not, I mean, not a giant studio, but if a you have a small, small room, room, if, you, if yeah. you're by yourself, like you can. If you're all alone in the closet, if, if you're watching, it's much like your office you're, would be yes, perfect. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You're watching a movie or something. You <laughs> yeah. can have it there. It's, you can it's actually loud. hear it. it. Probably not on an airplane, and you wouldn't want to have it on right, an airplane exactly. that loud. But yeah, but yeah, no, I, I can hear it. Now, one problem though is that because the Dolby thing is boosting it, um, if you play something that's actually loud enough, it does crackle a bit. So I don't know if you can hear this, but it sounds horrible. Oh wait a minute, no, that's just the Beach Boys. Yeah. I, but it's it's just yeah, it's yeah. suddenly there, it's but a it's, it's cracking a little bit. Yeah. So that's it's because they're just boosting it too much for the speakers to handle. But you can actually disable that stuff if by an old Windows trick of going to your speaker properties and going to the thing there of uh, and turning the thing. Oh, let's see. So with playback and the speakers and the, properties and advance, and then there's here we go. It's uh, <laughs> enable audio enhancements. You just uncheck that, and then that would disable that. But then it's much quieter, but it's more pure sound. Now, are you using this primarily as a tablet? Because I noticed once yes. we get on the desktop, I had the same problem with the old Surface. The touch targets on the windows are so small, it's yeah, very difficult it, to use this right, with yeah, a touch. It's, it's mostly a tablet. Yeah. Occasionally, I can get around and move files. Right. Around, and, you, of course, with the, the, the type keyboard, you do have a trackpad, so you can yeah. use a mouse and yeah. get more accurate mousing. Um, so, um, but, so what I was saying is, uh, you don't with the speakers in here, you don't get a pure sound. But if you do, were using pure sound, you'd want external speakers or headphones. Absolutely. So the thing is that this has a full-size USB 3 port. Um, because it's Tiger Force and that's, that's USB 3 now. So yeah. you can plug in an external DAC similar to the one that I reviewed like a year ago and, and plug get really in good speakers. Sound. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and speaking of the USB, uh, you can plug a you know, full size flash drive in, a hard drive, keyboard and mouse. Let me ask you about that. Printer, I, scanner. I, I don't think of Windows RT as having downloadable drivers. It seems, it feels to me. It, um, it, it can pull from Windows Update. You can't download them from like a vendor because right. no one's compiling them for RT, right. but Microsoft has basic drivers for most things. So you, so in theory, you could add hardware and somebody could create drivers for, but they'd have to sell it through the App Store. I think so, yes. Or Windows Update directly. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's kind of cool. Um, so, and also other external things, for instance, we have this nice handy little thing Is that thing HDMI? Here. It is. Wow. I think the TV actually we can actually off. see... Our screen here, as soon as we turn on the TV. There's so, the so, so many so many reviews here. today that just the TV turned off from being so bored, waiting for it. Oh, good. Well, come on, TV. Fail here. This is Should awesome. I wake it up? I, 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 I saw, pressed the button. Well, it's, it's, it's a slow TV. I saw you playing with this earlier. Yeah. Well, it's because the Gizwiz is on, it and I hit it. Oh, look at right. that. So, okay, so we got. You know what? Display. That looks great. So, um, but a cool thing that we can do is uh, if we. Let's see. We can you can, do this wirelessly with the LNA, or do you have to use a hardwired uh, HDMI it, it cable? It does have Miracast support with Miracast. Windows 8.1, so okay. if you have a Miracast thing, you can send that to it. Uh, but if I change this to Extend, now we have a whole second <laughs> screen here. So a cool thing that we can do, as an example, is here, why don't you grab this. Okay. And we've got the desktop up on the uh, and, screen uh, right we'll now. we'll go ahead and plug this in here, because it's got a USB port. And, and I can go ahead so and we've got the desktop the on the big here. screen, and you've got the regular and I'm just uh, touch carry interface this over here because it's an extended screen. So yeah. Got that oh over there. my! And I'm uh, now playing. Uh, yeah. So if you could you know, skip. Holy that. cow! And in the meantime, while you're going ahead and you know, play some awesome games, you can still work. I can still do whatever I want wow. here. So I'm going to go open up some Twitter and kind of see what's going on. Okay, that's. that's and boring. this is an Xbox controller. How am I connecting the Xbox controller USB. via USB? Yeah, if you had the wireless controller, you'd have the. There's a wireless thing. Oh, I think it. Well, it broke it. Well, it works great. So well, thank you very did, much for the uh, demo. Uh, <laughs> Frozen solid, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there we go. There okay, we now go. Start, okay. Now start. Now go ahead now and play press something. Start. Okay. So while you're playing, I'm going to All right, this is the demo. Here to I the am going to play a game while you. So, uh, huh? Yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, go to go to go I'm to pressing one all there. the buttons yeah, I know of. So go over there. You're right there. Go, uh, go, up there go over there. Uh, yeah, go, go right and up. Yes, this is not a demo. Okay, fail. well, this is a user yeah. fail. So, theoretically, you're playing this awesome game. It's got some actually decent graphics for a Surface RT. How do I get over there? I'm using uh, the it's thumbsticks. The uh, uh, okay, the mouse works great though. So, so we yeah, just the mouse select works that for great. me. So now, now Thank try you. it. Now see if you can hit uh, go to. Oh boy! <laughs> well, let's try uh, plugging this back in. This is awesome. It worked in the in the on the. Yeah, Burke said he also. Uh, 
Yeah, but then I got it to work with him. Oh, you got it to work. So I'm just going to... So theoretically, you're playing a game, whatever. Okay. No, no, what, let's start the game. I want to play the game now. It's loading. And so it's loading the game. You know, it's, it's, right. it's not okay. super fast. So we'll pretend you're playing it. So in the meantime, while you're playing a game, I'm just going to go ahead and start typing some stuff here in Word and get some, you know, <laughs> documents typed. And also while I'm doing that, I can... Does that uh, come up see. a lot that somebody wants to play with your uh, tablet oh, of course, while you're, all, all while the time. you're writing? So, and then also I can I can pin a Twitter to the side here and do... And so now I got You've three-way got three multitasking three way, here. All right, wait a minute. A zero, zero. Let's go. Come on. Uh, go. I don't, I don't think it's... It, let's... The, let's the, 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 <laughs> Now, I might, okay, oh, look, I can, I can pin a four. Oh. Yeah, so now i got four things going I'm on I'm playing a game here. So the point of this is that I've got four programs running right now on a Surface RT. Sort of. Sort of, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, you know, in theory. Um, and, you know, that's, that's, that can be kind of cool. But also, and that now going back to the what I typed in Word, this awesome thing, because it's Windows, it's got printer support. So I can go ahead that's and uh, go to print. Now, and, uh, we're going to get, I'm between now and, and next right show, now. we're going to get the Nokia 2520, which yeah. is the only other RT uh, tablet out with a new uh, right. uh, RT81. Right. It's just Surface RT2. Uh, Nokia and Microsoft, that's and it. Nokia. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'm going to be very interested in comparing the two. So uh, you I, chose yeah. this one, and I chose the other one. I'm thinking, well, we'll see. There, I, I, there is a big I'm difference. Sure one's using guys. the Qualcomm chip, one's using the Tegra. Performance-wise, um, I'm sure they're very similar. We'll see. Oh, yeah. look, my 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 he my, printed my thing that it printed. Uh, yeah, it printed. And not only that, I won my race while you were yeah, looking. You sure did. We're gonna just unplug that. All right, <laughs> pretend that uh, pretend that worked like a charm. So anyway, now. Now, because it's RT and you're limited to the Windows Store apps, if yeah. you're a Pandora user, Spotify, iTunes, Google uh, Music, you're out of luck for Pandora this kind of stuff. supposedly is coming. Supposedly it's coming. Instagram yes. supposedly coming. They're uh, adding more that's, all that's the time. For phone. Only phone. Okay. Uh, Pandora might be coming. I'm not sure. Okay. But for now, you're out of luck. But uh, this does have Xbox Music because it's that's you're great. in Windows. And Xbox that has music a lot of that. Combines the same kind of thing as right. Spotify. So it's got streaming. It's got a la carte buying. Right. It's got if um, if you pay the subscription, you can just stream all you want and download. Yeah, As you, you almost would expect, and it's certainly true of the iPad, you're so, going to be living in the Microsoft right. so, ecosystem. So they, they have, um, for like music and video, there are comparable services right. that are built into Windows. Right. So that's, it's not, if, if you if you are able to switch over to it, then, it's, then it works. Nobody is going to have an iPad and say, I want to use my iTunes with this. Right. This is in lieu of an iPad. This is right. you, if you're in the Microsoft ecosystem, this right. is where you're going to Yeah, and, that's, and the bottom line is, yeah, this is, this is for someone who's, in the, who's a Windows user. Right, right. Um, so now one thing that you get uh, when you buy this is 200 gigabytes of SkyDrive for two years. That's a good deal. So that's one reason why I lean towards this over right. Nokia because you're not going to get that with the 2520. Right. So that's, uh, it's two, uh, 200 gigabytes for two years. So that's a two, uh, two hundred dollars worth. That's a good so deal. So it's and this is four ninety nine. Four forty nine. Four forty nine. So four forty nine. If you minus two hundred from that, plus the keyboard, then, which is another hundred. Uh, one hundred and thirty for this one. Okay. Yeah. So and so that's the other thing is keyboard is not included. Right. Right. Um, so there's that. Uh, and you also get like a one year of Skype something, Skype Wi-Fi, unlimited use. Uh, I'm not a Skype user, so I'm not actually sure how that works, but there you go. Microsoft owns Skype, and they're starting to bundle it in right. as part of yeah. the... Yeah, so they're, they're kind of throwing these things in yeah. to make it more yeah. enticing. Well, I think that's the thing that I always found interesting about RT was the idea that you get in a kind of an all-in-one system. It is a tablet system. Right. But because it supports Office, you can have a lot more that you can do with it. Right. And this type keyboard is a real keyboard. Yeah, I mean, no, it's, like, it's it. really nice yeah. to type on. So uh, 449 for the base unit Wi-Fi only. Uh, it goes up from there. Uh, pros and cons. Let's do so that. Pros and cons. So uh, pros are it's super flexible, both in hardware and software. So like that demo that didn't really I love work, it. You could plug theoretically, in, right? it, it, yeah, yeah, like no, no. you can yeah, do yeah. a lot kind of thing. Like right. you can put it up to your USB TV and plug stuff there. in. And yeah. can, like, HDMI, yeah. yeah. Um, and also just uh, physically, like, you know, you could have it in like laptop mode or just tablet mode standing up like that or just down on there or other kind of things. Um, a orientation that I like to be in is if I'm laying in bed or on a couch um, is doing this and just sitting this on oh, top of Oh, that works pretty well. Just, you know, just reading stuff. You know, Mary Jo and Paul mentioned that and I thought that's counterintuitive because I'm typing. It's, it's but great it's, for on the couch. Like if yeah. you're watching TV on the couch, you just kind of sit this on top yeah. of you and just kind of read it's some a, stuff. It's a tray. Yeah. How, how is the weight on this? Is it a, It's like a pound and a half, little, oh, under, pretty little under a pound and a half. It's, it's, it's a heavy. tiny bit lighter than the old one, but it's it's... A little heavier than heavier an iPad, than an iPad, about 50% heavier than an iPad. But uh, it's also because it's it doesn't have the the tiny thin edges of that iPad. Right. It feels thicker and heavier than that one. But right. it's but numbers wise, it's it's very similar. 
So I'm going to guess uh, a buy. Well, so, so more pros. So oh, there's more um, pros. So the only battery Holy life I mentioned cow. earlier, okay. um, and it's got the 200 gig of SkyDrive. So those are the pros. Yep. Cons are it's limited to the Windows Store apps. Right. And if you can As are that, all RT tablets. Right. And, and, but that's not totally bad. So in, in the year or so that this has been out uh, with the, uh, the RT, I've, more apps have come out and it's gotten better. And I now have a core set of apps that I can just live in this for right. casual use. Uh, enough so that I can just I don't have to take a laptop with me if I'm going on a trip if it's a small trip I'm, I just take that with me. I and think I, that I can that's with it. that's the real point of like this. There's a nice yeah. IRC app now. You got Twitter and Facebook and you know, now I notice you've blah, taken blah, blah. the camera tile off of here. Do you use the camera ever? I don't know because yeah. I don't want to. No, it's kind of it's, dorky looking, yeah, exactly. but you got it. Yeah. It's got front-facing camera for already. Skyping yeah. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other con is that the keyboard is not included, so it's an extra thing and. And you really do need this with it, so you should include the price for that. Right. So try, buy, don't so, buy. So I would say try. Mm -hmm. um, it's fan it's a fantastic companion device if you are in the Windows ecosystem, and then it, everything just works with it. Everything syncs. So like I have Windows 8 running on all my computers, and you don't have to worry. All this it's stuff all just there. syncs over. And the, sky drives like, there. Is, yeah. Yeah. And it just it works great in that sense. If you're not in the Windows ecosystem, this is not going to be for you. Right. Um, but if if you are, I still say it's a try because you have so many options. Right. This is so many Windows thing. Pro options. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Like or the or the Nokia. Right. I mean, that's going to be a nice thing too. And it's you're right. just going to have to see which one works for you the best. Uh, if you're a pro user that needs desktop apps on your tablet for whatever reason, there are tablets that have that. Right. If you don't, then this is a great device. Alex Kumpel's the Flowmaster, and he's going to give it a try on the brand new Surface 2 tablet. You got in line at midnight. You went to the well, Microsoft I, well, store. Uh, I, I didn't plan on it doing that, but I thought, <laughs> okay, they're doing that. It kind of looked like fun. I thought I'd try it. I'd take pictures. And yeah, see, see, yeah. See, there there were some other... Uh, I actually wasn't planning on buying it right away, but then after I played with it hard not for to. a while, I was like, yeah, that's, it is snappier. All right. Well, he decided to buy anyway. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. I appreciate it. In fact, we thank all of our reviewers. A big show today. I as Actar, Shannon Morse. Uh, who was that guy sitting next to me? Patrick Delahanty. Radford. Uh, Radford Castro. Uh, I'm sure there were other people too. <laughs> who? No, Brian. Oh, Brian. Who? Angry, cr cranky, angry hippo <laughs> in the hot tub. Cranky Hippo in the hot tub. Uh, Brian Burnett, our technical director. Thanks to Shannon Morris for producing this show. We put all of our reviews on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash before you buy. So if you want to share an individual review with your friends or family, you can do that. You thinking about the buying the Surface uh, 2? Well, here's the review that we did on uh, Before You Buy. We also, of course, put the whole show available on our website, twit.tv slash BYB. And everywhere you find podcasts, you can subscribe to either the audio or the video versions of Before You Buy. Email us, BYB at twit.tv if there's something you'd like to see. Uh, next week, as I mentioned, the 2520 Xbox One review. We've got the new Nokia 1520, a really big show next week. So tune in. You can watch us do it live every Tuesday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 2300. I'm sorry, 2400 UTC on twit.tv. Uh, we'd love it if you do that, too. Remember, every Tuesday, you got to watch before you buy. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.